Well, hello, welcome to the video. We awoke earlier this week with the sad news that British blues legend John Mayall had suddenly died. Now, I worked with John once, and I'll talk about that a bit later on, but first of all, let's look back on his career. But first, before we do all that, can I just say that he wasn't particularly known as being a fantastic musician. He used to play quite a lot of instruments, being a great vocalist for playing the guitar, the keyboards, the harmonica, and indeed, there is an album where he played every instrument but John Mayle is not known particularly for being a fine musician or innovative in any way in that form but as a fantastic band leader he could spot talent and that's exactly what he did before going further if you like this please like subscribe let me know what you think by commenting down below let's get on with it John Mayle he was born in 1933 in Macclesfield in the north of England and he went to university in Manchester where he was taught graphic design and that's why a lot of his album covers are better than most of the era. Anyway, he came to London in the early 1960s after being advised to do so by Alexis Corner, who if you don't know, that is Google it, and he formed a band in 1963, and that band in 1965 became the Blues Breakers. Now, the Blues Breakers is one of the best known British blues bands of the era. <laughs> Mainly because it included in its lineup in those early days such luminaries as Eric Clapton, John McVie, Mick Fleetwood, Peter Green. <laughs> Keith Hartley on drums, and indeed Keith Hartley's first solo album, I think in 1969, the first track includes a recording of John Mayle, sacking him from John Mayle's Blues Breakers. Oh, it's John here. Hello, John. Um... I will say this now, I know he's just died, but John Mayle is known for being a bit, shall we say, tight with money. I will tell you a little story about that a bit later, but he was very, very frugal with what he paid people. And, that, and that's why the bands kept changing all the time, because frankly, if somebody got a better offer, they went. Because John Mayer was paying them wages, and a lot of people formed their own band, as Eric Clapton did and Peter Green did. And so it was like a constantly changing lineup. Even when he moved to the States, which was in the 1970s, his, he could pick the greatest players to play with him. Like when I put him on, which was in 2007, he had a great guitarist called Buddy Whittington. The list includes Walter Trout, Coco Montoya, and Harvey Mantel. Not a bad lineup. And it always meant that you always got a really good show with John. That's the thing, it was a very slick show. And to come back to my enduring memory, when we put him on, which was at the Rhythm Festival in Bedfordshire, we had a bit of a thing about the hotels because he originally wanted me to book five star hotels around the can't be more than 10 miles away from the festival site. And then he changed his mind like with a week to go after I'd already paid for the hotels and decided that he personally wanted a hotel in London, a five-star hotel, which cost me an extra few hundred pounds, but let's not quibble about a few extra pounds because we're talking about John Mayall. And, but when he came, he spent most of the day, apart from when he was on stage, in the merchandising tent, charging people five pound for an autograph. Now, I'm not going to say anything about that. That's John Mayall, that's what he did. He was a multi-millionaire, but he knew how to looking after the pennies. I suppose that's his northern background. Same as me, actually. I'm not particularly frugal with my car. That's why I'm always skinned. Well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, please follow me, please subscribe and watch all my videos. They're not all about people like John Mayall. The last one I did was about 10 facts about the Beatles. Before that, it was about great pub rock albums of the 1970s. And I do various things. So. I've been around in the music business since the early 1970s, too, in fact, so I do know a little bit about it. I was never part of the mainstream, I was never part of the big companies who organise things, I was always on my own, in effect. So I have a bit more of a nuanced view. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.